All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra's Lair. I'm your host, Larry, the most delectable Chupacabra man and also Zed Hunting Murder Machine. And we're back for another showcase of a custom killing floor map, giving thoughts, feedback, and a bit of a review for it. And for this episode, uh, I downloaded a selection of maps along with Kokri Forest and... The next one I think we'll check out is the Horizon Offices, which is the updated version of the offices, just with, you know, with the Horizon company working inside of it, because I, I don't know if there was actually the word or the name Horizon and Killing Floor 1. I don't think there was, but this is the updated version for Killing Floor 2, and it's created by Mr. 3M, which is Mix, Make, and Max, or Mix, Mac, Max. And let's just see how this plays. It was really well rated. And because this is going to be close quarters, I'm going to do a long uh, map. That will be the most likely that we won't get fondled in like a weird corner somewhere. Because the tricky thing with the offices was it was really easy to get cornered in one of the weird cubicles. And sometimes people that make these types of maps, they make them very true to form. But the unfortunate thing, and the note to any, you know, uh, wannabe or working towards being a custom killing floor map makers out there, is the old maps only really work for killing floor one. They're not big enough for killing floor two, so you gotta make things bigger. You gotta have plenty of maneuvering room. And then, you know, funnel people into all of those delicious, uh, choke points to murder things. So let's see here. I will probably want to play... not the demolitionist, hell no on that. Probably the support class. And I will ready up for that. Because that, you know, shotguns, man. You just point a shotgun in any given direction. And this is looking very true to form already. Like, the cars are all here in the parking lot. Yeah, this will be great. And then as you go into the front lobby, there's like... A gutted out hallway over here that leads to the back stairs, and there's some spawn points and a and a store. Yeah, this is great. So this is what I'm talking about. This is very true to form to the original map, but the difference being that everything is just bigger. The rooms are bigger and wider and taller, so you don't feel quite so claustrophobic when you start walking up the stairs trying to figure everything out. And then... It looks like, you know, M3 did a nice job of reusing plenty of the existing art assets for the game. Which, you know, include things like, you know, reusing the pictures. Because you don't need to custom mod your own pictures into the game. That would just be crazy. And these are actually the cubicles that I remember getting trapped in by a flesh pounder in the original game and being molested when I first bought this game and was playing with some friends of mine. So this is pretty great. I'm enjoying this. Let's just have ourselves a nice little look around. So if I remember correctly, there was really a couple of places that people really set up a choke point, depending on the difficulty of the game. The most obvious one was always like before you even entered the building. And the other one was this rooftop area because a lot of people, you could basically, whoa. Oh, you can just fall right off of here and die, can't you? Well then. Can you go down there? Oh, there's... no. Oh, there's Fatty. Fatty, fat, fat! Alright, Fatty's gonna come play with me, probably. But a lot of people, like, stood up here, and they would pick things off from this door here, as they spawned through that door, or through that door. And if this wasn't didn't work, they'd spot they'd, you know, camp the front office, the front gate, the door, and there was also, I think, like, this, the office just down there where people would also camp the spawns to kill things. I don't remember which one in particular got kind of hairy when you played on higher difficulties, because I only went as hot far as, I think, Perfect. suicidal. But I never really got that far as Hell on Earth with Killing restocked. Floor 1, because... Oh, do I they did not lay jump? No, I'm not, not that I'm crazy. Impressed. I'm gonna walk downstairs because I'm not insane. Don't make me jump, that's fuck- I don't know how the jumping works in this. I don't trust you, uh, M3, you crazy person. 
Okay, so here's the middle office. This is where a lot of people would hold up as well. Or this is the top office. The middle office is where we are now, you question mark? I, I kind of remember, or kind of don't. So we don't have enough money to buy my favorite boomstick, but that's fine. So yeah, this is this is a really well-made map. I can understand why this was voted very highly. Oh yeah, here is the middle office. This is where people would kind of camp out. One of the vendors was right, yeah, right here. And then people would shoot things as they came around this corner or as they came down the stairs. Unfortunately, I remember a lot of people getting killed here, especially on the stairs back when I, my friend uh, Emo Anubis is his gamer handle, uh, started playing Killing Floor 1 with me. And he and uh, Mozzie, we played a lot of this game together, just chilling out in the evening when I got home from work from one of the contracts that I was working with a company at the time. And we were just blast things. I think uh, we tried like a podcast style series for a little while. It was Killing Floor Fiesta, where we'd have like a little fiesta and just uh, chill out and murder things. A little, little party. Little little murder party. It was a pretty good time. No. Bad gore fast. No jumping in the building. You have adult manners and I expect you to use them, sir. Let's let's go back up to the to the top office. I like the top office a little better. And it was actually one of those places in Killing Floor 1 that I actually remember doing quite a bit of welding. Cause I always liked the support class, but the trouble in Killing Floor 1 was in order to level the support class, you actually had to weld a certain number of doors, a certain amount of door health. And that shit took for fucking ever, and I actually remember dropping into groups of people that actually would specify that they were completely fine with perk leveling, especially because you had to, like, sociopathically weld every single damn door, which was a little bit insane. So you can see where that would have been awkward for people. So support was a bitch to level. I remember there being a couple of other classes that were a bitch to level because you actually had to either get a specific number of headshots, and if you were new to the game and new to not having a reticle, that could be very problematic. Or you had to kill a certain number of sirens or a certain number of invisi bitches, the stalkers. And, you know, everybody just kind of killed everything. So it was kind of hit or miss whether or not you'd actually get to kill the thing that you wanted to kill. So, this is actually, this is all looking very well made. Like, here's the break room with dirty dishes floating in the sinks. A lot of detail in here, like there's little, little maggots crawling around in there, and there's something in the half-finished microwave. The fridge is a jar with stuff in it. There's a cola machine. There's a water cooler. This is great. You got, you did a nice job with this. Like, all the offices are full of stuff. There's shit on the desk, there's a computer over here, there's, you know, everything is here. Everything is where it should be. Well, uh, there's even, way. like, a scaffolding. Start can I go out on the scaffolding? Is that a thing I can do? I can go out on the scaffolding. I'm a witch. And this goes into the stairs. Was this... I don't remember this being in the original. So if this wasn't in the original, very nice addition. Like, this is great. The rooms are just the right size, Last the stairs chance. are just the right size. There's plenty of choke points and places where I can get stabbed in the face. This is probably the best well, modernization of one of the maps that I've seen. Like, even the new West London one that had like a day-night cycle with a storm, even that one wasn't quite as well polished as this, because this thing uses a proper, like, higher resolution textures, lots of reused assets from the other parts of the games. I like this. This I would recommend to everybody to try out. At least once. And uh, if you're interested in trying this out for yourselves, by all means, I will put the link in the video description, and you can check it out yourselves that way. Oh, shit, I'm getting molested in here. Nope, Larry needs to get out of here. Or is there some oh, freaking invisible bitches? You need to just settle it down. Larry is not in the mood for grab ass right now, alright? Settle it down. God damn it. There we go. See? See what you made me do? Now I gotta bring in the cleaners, and I gotta get all the gore off the walls, and I don't know what he was attacking there, but... something. 
Let's go back down before we end off this video and see what's going on on the lower levels. Because I kind of just blitzed right through those areas. I feel like there might have been something kind of interesting that we could check out. Also, the next spawn point for the vendor is down there. So why not go check that puppy dog out? Um. Oh, we're on the back side of the parking lot. Oh, so there's a front and back parking lot. That is definitely new. I do not recall there being two parking lots. So that's great. So this is like the employee parking lot. Where the f Oh, there's like a SWAT van here. Can I open this? No. No, I cannot. Oh, well. So yeah, this is a very nice touch. I wondered if we could come down here. Because there's like a computer, like a security guard terminal. The street is blocked off by a military... What is that? It's a personnel carrier with a little gun on the top. This is great. I love this. And then this is the basement area where the receptionist is at. And of course, one of the main spawn points down here is in this room. Oh, okay. Oh, this is... Oh, this was great. So it used to just be there was a pile of chairs back here that was on fire. But if you look in here, it actually leads to a hidden laboratory deep underground behind this broken down wall or door. Maybe this was a door. Kind of looks like there used to be a wall here, though. And so stuff spawns out of this broken down elevator shaft that goes way down there and also out of the hidden lab where evil and sinister things were happening. Ooh. So yeah, this actually, this makes perfect sense as like a cheap kind of middle class America office building is hiding a secret research facility like I'm watching the Resident Evil movie. So this is great. So if you guys and gals at home are interested in playing this game for yourselves, it's the link is in the video description. It's on the Steam Workshop, so it's a one-click install. You just click the subscribe button on that page and it'll automatically install it for you. And then you, it'll, you know, it'll download it like it's just another update for the game. And you can get playing this puppy dog. I really like this. There's actually been a lot of really great maps that have been coming out. So that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe as I get swarmed by a bunch of gore fests. And I will catch you next time. And of course, if you didn't like the video, be sure to hit that dislike button and let your pal Larry know what you didn't like about it. Maybe it'll give me ideas for new series or things to improve. And otherwise, I hope you guys have a great morning, afternoon, lunch, breakfast, dinner thing, slash pan-dimensional adventure, and I will catch you next time. Bye, everybody! Ooh, Fatty. Fatty's the last one alive. Is it just Fatty? Is there another one? Who else is still alive? Oh, it's an invisible. Oh, of course. So yeah, bye, everybody!